Welcome back to the uh, playlist for the play framework using Scala. So in the last video, we set up an initial version of our app. Oh, and so we put both the code for the login page and a stub for the tasks on one page uh, because instead of sending HTML back and through back and forth, we are going to send data and it's helpful to have both of them there so that it's easy to switch them from visible to hidden. And we start off with the tasks being hidden. So the first thing that we need to add to this is the ability to log in. So we can actually go to our task two. In fact, I can probably close some of these. We no longer need the HTML for those. We had a validate here. And what we're going to do is going to be fairly similar to this. We could actually make a def validate action implicit request rocket. Okay. And right now this is unhappy because we don't have a return. In task two, these were being done as uh, URL encoded form data. For this app, we're doing all of our communication in JSON, and that does change a little bit of how we handle that. In addition to changing how we handle it, I actually want to go to our model here, and maybe I should just go ahead and add a new file. We'll call it userdata.scala. It's actually gonna be a very small file. It's gonna have a case class for user data that has the username that is a string and the password that is a string. Like I said, very simple. This is the data that's really being sent from the client to the server to tell us uh, what, um, what they typed in for the login or for creating a new user. And that way the controller can get hold of that JSON object. Okay, so I want to get that data out of the request. Now, what we did previously was we took the request and we looked at its body and we got it as a form URL encoded value. And we're gonna start off with something similar to that. So we take the request, we take its body, but then instead of as form URL encoded, I want to see it as JSON. And now, if we just stop here, this says that we have something that's called an option of JS value, and it required a result. Okay. Well, first off, it's an option. And so I am going to map that option. And we could take the, it's a JS value, it's actually going to be the body of what gets sent across. If it fails, then I'm missing a dot here. If that request, if it failed to get the value as JSON data, I need to really just kind of send them back to where, uh, to the beginning. So I'm actually going to do a redirect and force them to reload the original page. And we want that to be routes dot test three dot the load page. Okay, so we will redirect them to there. Now this is still unhappy. We can probably make it happy by just giving a simple okay with nothing in it and that'll make it compile. Okay, so we have this validate. <clears throat> and of course, what's supposed to happen in here is similar to what happened inside of the previous validate. <coughs> this is supposed to be a JavaScript uh, value. Now, um, one of the things that, that we want to do a little bit differently, differently here is because we're using the play JSON, we want to take that value and uh, parse it out. Okay, so we have this body and it's a JS value. 
And so you can take that JS value and we can use the JSON that is coming from play JSON and say from JSON of the thing that we want to change, which in this case is body. And from JSON would take a type. So that was the user data that we just created. Okay, so this is currently not found. It's in package models. Apparently we haven't imported all of models. Okay, so now the error has changed and it says there's no deserializer found. Hmm, okay, how do we deal with that? Well, when you're working with play JSON, you they have things called reads and writes. And the reads allow them to take uh, JSON and convert it into Scala objects and the writes take Scala objects and convert them back out to JSON. You can write these manually yourself and I will point you to the, the play framework documentation where you can read on, on how to do that. For this video though, I want to utilize the fact that this can happen fairly automatically. Okay. Uh, if you're using case classes, there are built in uh, things that will automatically generate the readers and the writers for you. And they need to be in, as this says that it can't find a deserializer, and it says try to, uh, try to implement an implicit reads or format for this type. We're gonna create an implicit reads, and for the time being, I'm going to put this inside of here. Okay, just because it's a, uh, a convenient place to put it. So we're gonna make an implicit val, and let's call it user data reads, and it will be equal to a JSON dot reads of user data. Note now this error has gone away. Okay, this is giving us back a value that we can do something with. Maybe if we assign it to a, so the from JSON, it tells us it gives us back a JS result. Hmm. Well, it turns out that because we don't know for certain that that JSON had the right data for a user data, this can fail. Okay. And so we actually need to match this on the possible values that could come back. The one we're hoping for is a JS success. Okay. Uh, in which case the value that we want, the user data, which I will call UD, is going to be in a first variable here. Um, so UD is a user data, and then we also get a path inside of, of the uh, inside of the JSON, which we're not going to use here, but we have access to it. Now I'm getting a warning here because this is not of a complete match and it says at the bottom of the error message, it would fail on a JS error. And indeed, we do not have the error handling here. So I'm going to match on a JS error and in this case, I'm not going to pull out the contents. We'll talk about, you might be wondering about that E at. And I need to do something here. It turns out if what they sent us was not proper uh, JSON, um, then we probably have, let's put an underscore here. Actually, we could put an underscore here and I don't need that line at all. If what they sent us wasn't appropriately formatted JSON, that means it probably didn't come from our client app and it's probably someone trying to hack in, in which case I'm just going to redirect them back to the homepage. I wanna give them, I don't wanna give them the time of day. That's all I'm gonna, gonna say to them. Uh, we still have an issue, and in fact, we can probably, uh, when this works, what do we need to do? Well, then we need to give back something that says whether or not that user data was correct. Okay, and that's where we can go look at our other task list. 
So instead of being username and password here, we can do things like ud dot username and ud dot password. And so if we were to copy some of this inner code from what we did in task two, or in version two of our task list, and paste it in here. Okay. I'll copy, actually I'll just get rid of that line there. Now this should be unhappy. So it calls the memory model and it asks to validate the user on username and password. Well, it's ud.username and ud.password because those were uh, deserialized from the JSON. And we need that in two other places as well. Okay, and we're passing through the CSRF token so that we have a value as we had done previously. So this is going to give us back, now right now this gives us back a view from the task list with a session. I like the session information uh, because we want to be able to get the username, but I actually don't want this uh, value here. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, simplify this so that I give you back something that says that it worked. And in fact, how about we say, uh, and I want this as JSON, true dot, and remember we have this code down here where we did a JSON dot JSON. To JSON. I just want to pass back true as a very simple JSON response. Now it's possible that if this were a more elaborate app, I'd want to give them more information uh, about this. Uh, indeed, I probably could at this point give them back, since they've just validated, I could give them back not just a true, but something that shows the entire list of, of, what, their, um, of what their tasks are. We'll come back in the next video and we will add that type of functionality into here so that we can display the list. We also need to make sure that the validate is working as it's written right now, and then we can have it send additional information that we might need.